Okay. Next time we got uh, to this equation, this differential equation. So this is equation uh, 3.34, or similar enough, in uh, Goldstein. It's, I didn't solve it um, because you can find it in pretty much uh, every textbook. The solution is u equals a cosine theta plus a little thingy. So, you know, A is an amplitude, and this is going to have a sinusoidal shape, um, but you have the, uh, the other thing. So this other thing is what makes things uh, elliptical rather than uh, circular. So it gives you your, uh, your ellipse. And we relate it, you know, those quantities to uh, the eccentricity and to L. Well, I guess the angular momentum. It was this one. So the angular momentum, which is also related to the energy, um, is related to A, which is the semi-major axis, um, the mass. Um, K is you know the constant that makes the uh, the central force uh, correct, so has the correct units. Uh, in the case of uh, general gravity, gravitation will be like gm, and. Yeah, the eccentricity is the extra part over here between you know perfect circle and the so the radius of a perfect circle and the semi major axis so the these variables are you know some of them are geometrical um, like a and e some of them are physical the angular momentum but all of them are related We also, yeah, that was mostly it. We, we talked about the virial theorem. So now we're going to cover a different application of these same ideas, um, the central force. So it is, I think this one is a little better. I'm gonna use the green one. It's uh, scattering. in a central force field. So what is scattering? What have you heard and what objects have you heard can get scattered? Electrons, what else? Neutrons. Neutrons, what else? Uh, photons. Uh, did you say phonons? No. Yeah, photons. Photons. Phonons can also get scattered. What else? Hmm? Proton. Proton. What about people? So do you expect the scattering of a person? Um, you know, just like you have uh, electrons and, and photons, uh, persons are the, the quantum, it's the quantum of uh, humanity. So humanity is a continuum and persons are quanta. 
So will you expect the scattering to be the same to an electron or a neutron? Why yes or why not? The masses are different and the energies are different. Yes. So, you know, in general, if you have an electron or a neutron, you're going to have uh, quantum effects, right? Um, if you have something bigger, um, a person or a planet, then um, scattering follows the same general rules, but the interactions you know, are, are classical. So we can say for sure, you know, if the, uh, you know, I guess in the classical regime, if your electron comes in this direction, then it's going to end, you know, we know exactly where it's going to end. But if you have, you know, um, a photon getting diffracted or something, then um, you will have your, your probability wave. So um, electrons, photons, protons, planets, everything can get scattered by a central force. So, you know, in the case of an electron, what could provide that central force? Well, most likely it's going to be uh, some Coulomb interaction. What about for planets? Gravity, right? So, um, if we have, this is the center, you know, it's, it's only a, it's supposed to be a point, I'm making it bigger here. This is the center of the force field. If it is attractive, then you might have, you know, let's say this is the sun and there's a meteorite, it's gonna be coming or moving kind of like this, right? And at some point, maybe over here, it is going to interact gravitationally. I mean, it's, it's interacting the whole way, but it has to get pretty close in order, in order for the, uh, the path to change substantially. So, and then afterwards, it's not going to be affected by the, by the central field very much, and so it will continue in a, a kind of a straight line. So maybe it's going to look like that. Um, this is an attractive potential. If the particle passes closer to the center of the potential, what would you expect the, uh, the angle to be? Greater than that or smaller? going to write kind of parallel to this one. Um, the interaction is going to start you know, relatively earlier because it is closer. So maybe this one's gonna look, well, physics doesn't let you do that. So afterwards, again, it looks just like a straight line, but over here, the interaction is stronger because the, um, the R is smaller. So you can have a um, attractive potential like this one. You could have a repulsive potential. So maybe we'll look, Kind of like that. Again, this has to be kind of a straight line. Straight line, it changes over here, straight line. Okay, so that's kind of um, easy to understand. So how do we characterize it mathematically? We're going to use the intensity. 
So the intensity is a flux per unit time. What is a flux? Whatever. Whatever that passes through an area of Yes. So let's you know let's let's call them particles. They could be electrons, you know, not quite particles, but uh, in this case number of particles per unit area. And in this case the intensity is divided by uh, unit time. So, in general, the outgoing path is going to be different than the, uh, from, from the incoming path. And we need to define another quantity. We have a unit area over there. So we're going to be using sigma of omega d omega and so that is the number of particles scattered into a solid angle And the solid angle is d theta divided per, well, I guess all of these divided by time. So we're looking at, it doesn't have to be like instantaneous snapshots. You can say, oh, you know what happens in this second. So it can be a little bit more of an average. Um, and all of these is divided by the incident. Oh, sorry, is that sigma? Is that sigma? Sigma, yes. St uh, stands for S, scattering. Um, incident um, intensity. Okay, so have you seen this function before? It's called the uh, scattering cross section. If you do, um, I guess, any kind of scattering, neutron scattering, uh, proton scattering. So we would see it like in Raman scattering? Studying that stuff. Yeah, remind me what is random scattering? It's like photons with phonons? Uh, you excite a material with photons and it releases another photon. Yeah. It has another stuff, no? Like, it has something to do with the momentum. Well, momentum has to be conserved, but I don't remember. But yes, yeah, so, so that would be um, a photon of a particular wavelength, right? And it's interacting with the phonons, with the vibrations. Mm -hmm. um, I think, well, the photon has to be absorbed by, it's going to interact with the atom, so it's going to, I, I guess, with the, with the electrons around the atom. So it's going to excite the electrons and then it's going to decay. And so, actually, you'll have a rather complicated interaction there with the phonon, the, the electron, and the photon. Energy has to be conserved, momentum has to be conserved. So, um, can you do Raman with any wavelength? Uh, I guess it depends on the material you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So, for different materials, you will use different wavelengths? Mm -hmm. Well, what I do in the lab is, uh, so depending on the material they give me, I do a wavelength scan to see uh, what intensity are higher mm -hmm. at that wavelength. So 
I guess in this particular example, we're not looking at the wavelength, but uh, that is another part of the scattering cross-section. So the scattering cross-section is gonna be different for different wavelengths. The, electron, the photons are going to see different things depending on what their wavelength is. And you know, for, uh, for neutrons, for example, because you have these quantum effects, um, the scattering cross-section is actually negative for some elements, I think for hydrogen. I don't know if you guys do neutron, neutron scattering. Um, and so that has to do with the phase of the wave function, like it is moved backwards. So there's a lot of information that you can get from these uh, scattering cross-sections. So we're going to learn, I guess, how to set up the problem um, in the general case. Um, let's see. I'm gonna move this one over here. I don't wanna keep it. So first we're gonna look at d, d uh, omega. So d omega is a element of solid angle. It's a little bit difficult to draw, but I, I'll try. You have your the center of your potential over here and you're going to send uh, your particle along this path um, it's going to interact and let's say that it's repulsive so it's gonna move like this like that but you know you have all your symmetries so actually you might have another one over here kind of at the same distance from the uh, center and so it's going to look like that and you can also rotate it and you can just do this and it's going to be ro rotating out like this so it's actually um, three-dimensional and over here you have your circle, you know, for just to make it easier, I'm going to say that R is equal to one. And so when you, when you rotate it, it's like, you can do this, right? Then this part is going to come over here. Uh, how, can I, how can I draw it? Um, it's going to look kind of like that. So it's not on this. It's not on this surface. It's going to be a line over here. You know, an, an area of the surface this way, and then the other way. So it looks. It's going to look kind of like that. We have our angle over here. Um, this is. Um, capital theta and so if you move capital theta a little bit uh, that that gives you you know the the thickness of this radius so this is your D um, theta cap capital theta so then This angle, I mean, this um, distance is r, but we're calling it just um, you know equal to one. But this one is going to be r prime. So r prime is r sine of theta. 
So this is your angle theta. This is r. So this one, our prime is r sine theta. So we know. Correct? Yeah. That makes more sense. Um, so now if we know this R prime, we can get the diameter of that uh, circle. So the diameter is going to be uh, 2 pi uh, R sine theta. Right? So is the diameter. What is going to be uh, this length? We're drawing this circle over here. Or this, I guess you can take it out and it's not going to be a circle anymore. It's going to be a, a square uh, rectangle. So this is one measure. What is the other one? d theta, right? So this is your this is your uh, your cross section. If we just you know forget about the r, then we get two pi sine theta and d theta. So this area, this solid angle is 2 pi sine theta d theta. So when you send some particles in this direction, they're going to be in between um, in between theta and theta plus d theta, right? So that's going to be over here part of your um, unit area. So now let's talk about, this one is called the unit, I mean the um, the impact parameter. I think it's kind of a weird name. So the impact parameter is S and is defined as you have your Scattering scatter over here. We have the path, and over here is going to interact. S is the, the parallel distance between the path mm -hmm. and the center of the of the field. The center of the potential. So if S is smaller. What happens to the angle? It increases. Yeah, because the interaction is going to be stronger, right? Yep. So that's why it is called impact parameter. It's just this distance. But it does have, um, I guess no pun intended, a big impact. So we are going to have, this is V, V0, the velocity. And you know, originally it's just uh, perpendicular to the distance. So the angular momentum, which is conserved, uh, the magnitude, 
is R cross P. So the magnitude, um, actually it's what we want, is magnitude of R, magnitude of P, what else? Sine of what? The angle, what is the angle? 90. It is 90, but why? So is the angle between R in this direction and P in that direction, right? So sine of the angle, I'm gonna use alpha, between R and P. So the angle is 90 degrees. What is sine of 90? One. One. So we can put it here, and then we can get, get rid of it. Um, this distance r is s. Um, and p is just m times um, v naught. So that is the angular momentum. Uh, the energy is also going to be conserved. And when we're really far away, what is the potential energy? Let's say that we are at minus infinity. Zero. Zero. What about after it interacts and goes away to plus infinity? Zero. Zero. So we can assume yeah, except maybe for that very, very, very brief interaction time, um, the energy is just kinetic energy. So E equals uh, one half of m v naught squared. So two E divided by m, square root of that, is the velocity. And so L, the angular momentum, is um, S M square root of two E over M. I guess we can put the M squared over here. Uh, get rid of this one and this one. And so we get that the angular momentum is S times uh, two times the energy times the mass. So the, the impact parameter is a function The impact parameter is a function of the angular momentum and the energy. So in classical physics, if the energy is fixed and the angle of scattering is fixed, then the problem is uh, uniquely determined. So, uh, incident energy, right, the, yes, incident energy, so that'll be the kinetic energy and S, how close it's gonna get to, uh, to the center of the potential. With those two parameters, you know exactly what this angle theta is going to be. If you have, if quantum mechanics matters, then uh, you don't necessarily um, you're not necessarily going to get theta, um, one value. You're going to get a distribution. 
Other than that, you know, the, the map uh, stays the same. So this means that um, I'm going to put this over here. We're going to assume this, but it makes sense. Different values of S, the impact parameter, cannot uh, produce the same scattering angle. So if S is this value, then this is going to be theta. If S is half, you know, then theta is going to be greater. It's not going to be equal to this one. And if S is even larger than this, then you know, it might look like this. So this angle theta is smaller. It is not equal to this one or to this one. So what you're assuming is that for each value of s, you have a different value of, uh, of theta. So now we're going to count Actually, I'm going to where should I put it? to put it over here. The number of particles scattered uh, into a solid angle the theta Um, so d theta is between uh, sorry d omega is between theta and theta plus d theta is the same as number of particles uh, that correspond to whatever you have over here, S, S plus DS. So this makes a lot of sense. We counted um, well, we, we derived what was this uh, d omega, the, um, the solid angle. And if you just, if you assume that for each value of s, there's a different value of theta, then the particles that you shoot into your potential over here, over here, uh, whatever comes in has to come out. Conservation of particles. So um, what is this uh, S and DS? I'm going to, uh, I guess I can, I can draw it over here. It's 
it's going to be you have this is the center of your potential it's gonna look like that so we're going to look at s plus delta s so let's say this one and this one and you can rotate it so it comes out right and it's going to form um, another another cross section over here so when it was coming out it was over here now that it's coming in and it has to be here well we're looking at the ds so the radius is s plus the ds but the diameter is going to be 2 pi s so we can extend it it's 2 pi s and what is the the other dimension Yes, good. So we have another area. So by conservation of particles, two pi s ds. So that's the area and you need an intensity number of particles uh, per unit area per unit time so this gives you your particles per time ds is going to be um, absolute value we'll see later why and on this side we're going to have 2 pi Uh, we're going to put the scattering cross-section here. It's a function of theta. Um, actually, let me write it slightly different. It's 2 pi uh, sine theta d theta, which is the, uh, the solid angle. And then we need an intensity, just like uh, over here. Uh, so that intensity is given by, we need the scattering cross-section and the uh, intensity. So we can get rid of the two pi's. We can get rid of the intensities. And we end up with S ds equals um, sine theta d theta um, and the scattering cross-section uh, and we need the absolute values because this dh um, well d theta and ds can be negative but particles can never be negative, the number of particles. And it makes sense, you know, it's just a symmetry. So um, then we can solve for the scattering cross section. So the scattering cross section is going to be S divided by sine theta ds d theta um, absolute value of that so we have an expression for the scattering cross-section in terms of theta so the scattering angle and s the uh, vertical distance between the path and the center of the potential.
Okay, so this is, yeah, it's kind of cool to see the drawings, I think. It's not super easy to imagine everything. So, if we have the center of the potential over here, this is minus infinity, and this is plus infinity. Um, at minus infinity, it has to touch this line, and at plus infinity, it has to touch this line. Over here, the path is going to be a little different, you know, because it's being uh, repelled by, by the potential. So it has to look kind of like that. So this angle, just the wow, never mind. What is this angle? Look at uh, our drawings. Theta, capital. There is um, a distance over here. We can call it, uh, I guess it is Rm. It's the distance of the closest approach, the closest that the particle is to the center of the potential. And this. is going to um, make an angle psi in this direction and the same one in this direction. So, you know, because this is a, this doesn't look as pretty over here, let's see. Um, it is Rm, so these two have to be equal angles. So then um, theta is equal to pi minus 2 psi. So pi is 180 degrees, and so it's, it's 180 degrees minus this one and minus this one. from our Keplerian orbits, we got this equation. If theta is, well, I guess we didn't have the integral at the beginning. But d theta is mr squared, square root of two over m, uh, e minus v, v is a function of the distance minus L squared over 2 MR squared. So this comes from when we had um, dr and d theta in terms of dt. So this is 1 over, sorry, L v r. So if we integrate on both sides, we get this equation integral from zero to r, r squared, um, I guess, dr um, plus,
theta naught. Notice that this is uh, not capital theta, right? So this is the same theta that we were using uh, before with the Keplerian orbits. So the angle between, um, I guess, in the um, orbit, so this would be theta. So we're going to make this one um, usable in this case by realizing that we get psi uh, if r naught is equal to infinity um, should be minus infinity uh, and theta naught will be beta I mean, uh, pi. So 180 degrees. Mm. Yeah, so you get 180 degrees here. This line. And uh, R goes to infinity. So you should get psi. The other one is uh, R equals Rm and theta is pi minus psi. So you get both cases, this one and the other one. So when you substitute you get this equation. pi minus psi, integral from infinity to Rm, V is still a function of R, plus So I guess you can switch this one to, and make it negative and then get rid of the pi's. So this one is from Rm to infinity. Mm, I guess the rest looks the same. So it's R squared Uh, that is one of these um, angles. So finally, just, it's just going to be an um, act of um, mathematics. can relate psi to theta. So it's just you know pi minus twice of that. So then we can get the angle theta, which is a function of the impact factor, is going to be equal to pi minus 2. integral from the closest approach to infinity of R mm, oops I was I don't think my algebra is complete here so I'm gonna write it like this zero um uh, this this two goes here this is SDU, 1 minus V, which is a function of U, over E, minus S squared 
u squared. So u, just like in the differential equation that we saw at the beginning, is 1 over r. So the, sub the substitution was made here um, already. So you can get the scattering angle as a function of the impact parameter, which is which includes the, uh, the velocity, right? So the energy. And uh, you get it with this integral, assuming that you have a, a Keplerian interaction between the incident particle and the potential. So this is kind of cool because what well, this potential you know, can have a different uh, uh, dependencies on R, could be you know, 1 over R if it's uh, the force is inverse squared, or it could be you know, 1 over R squared if it's uh, a little tighter and stronger. You can have a combination, you know, So in principle, you can um, you can fit your potential, and if you look at this integral, you can solve it numerically if necessary by measuring this function. So you can measure the incident energy and the angle. You can characterize the potential. So that's kind of really cool because that allows you to know, I guess, the, the microscopic part of the, of the physics. You can do this with an experiment. You measure it, then you get that value. All right, let's, uh, let's go to uh, our next thing. Thank you.